Good morning. We welcome all parishioners and visitors as we pre prepare to celebrate the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The parish barbecue will take place on Sunday, August 11th, following the 12 noon Mass. This is a great opportunity to connect with other members of our church community and have some fun. Please see cut out in the bulletin and place your food order in the collection basket in the coming weeks. We will be holding a memorial mass for Colin McInnes, who passed away in Nova Scotia on May 22nd. Colin was our organist and choir director until his retirement for over 40 years. The mass will take place on Saturday, July 6th at 11 a.m., followed by a light reception in the gathering room. All parishioners are encouraged to attend. Our celebrant today is Father Rico. Please stand and join in the processional hymn. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather at this Mass on this, the Lord's Day, we pray for the special intentions of the Digba and D'Souza families. I invite all the special friends of Jesus to come forward for our children's liturgy. Come on down, friends. Friends, I want us to look at our stained glass windows here above the altar. In today's first reading, God talks to Job and says, were you there when I created the world? Were you guys there when God created the world? No. Was, do you think Father Rico was there? I'm, I'm a little bit worried about your answer. Do you think <laughs> Father Rico was there when God created the world? No. Was anyone else there to help God? Yeah. No, because he doesn't need help. So we hear in the gospel that there were all kinds of storms happening to the disciples, and Jesus calms the storm. God reminds us he's in charge, and he never needs our help, but he always helps us, so we can always know that we bring our needs to him. So let's ask God to bless you as we hear about the power of our creating God, okay? May Almighty God bless you, friends, the Father and the Son 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's follow the leader today. Friends, for the times we have doubted the presence of God in our midst, for the times where we have blamed Him for the storms in our own lives, we bow our heads and ask for His mercy, for God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You alone can calm the storms of life. Christ, have mercy. Christ you are our Creator and God, leading us to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.
They saw the works of the Lord and the wonders in the abyss. Give thanks to the Lord, His love is everlasting, His command raised up a storm which tossed its waves on high. sank to the depths, their hearts melted away in their plight. Give thanks to the Lord, His love is everlasting. They cried to the Lord in their distress, from their straits He rescued them. He hushed the storm to a gentle the billows of the sea were still. Give thanks to the Lord, His love is everlasting. They rejoiced and they were called, and He brought them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for His kindness and His wondrous the children of men. Give thanks to the Lord, His love is everlasting. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. has risen among us. God has looked favorably upon his people. Alleluia, alleluia. and sisters, the Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory when evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Friends, in the beautiful conversation that God has with Job in the first reading, just as I said to the little friends, he asks a very important question. Were you there when I created the world? Why would he ask Job that question, 1030 Mass? Come on. Why would he ask that question? Pardon? Yeah, Job thought he knew better than God. Does this sound like anyone you might know? Have you ever in your prayer, as I have sadly in mine, told God what he should and shouldn't be doing? Questioning God, why is there a storm? Why aren't you doing this? You should be doing that. God says to Job, were you there? Are you in charge or am I in charge? And he says the same thing to us. Are you in charge or am I in charge? Right? Because it's easy to tell God what he should be doing. But let me ask you the question. Who's in charge, the parent or the child? Oh, yeah, all you parents. Parents, parents, parents. <laughs> Last Mass, believe it or not, a child said to me, the parent. And I said, Mom, get that in writing. This is your chance, right? But let's face it. How many times do we, God's children, tell the creator of the universe what he should be doing? And on a timeline and the way we should and what we expect. But is it up to us or is it up to God? Who's actually in charge here? And so God humbles Job to remind him. And remember, Job is faithful. Job isn't some wishy-washy Catholic like some of us are. Job is faithful, but even he forgets who's in charge. So all of us need a reminder not just those foolish apostles or Job, but you and me, we need to be reminded of who's in charge. And that is Almighty God, not us. It is up to Him, because He's the only one who can calm the storm. What is the first word Jesus says when the apostles wake Him up? What's the only, he said three words. What was the first word he said? Peace. Ah, peace. Peace that only God can give. Now you think, well, he's saying peace to the wind, peace to the water, sure. But peace in the apostles. You're not trusting me. I'm asleep on purpose because you should just be there expecting. Jesus is going to do something. Whatever he's going to do, he's going to do. But how many of us think God is asleep on the cushion in our boat all the time? And that we are so quick at times to blame God for the storms in our life. But if we actually start to analyze, is it God's fault that there's poverty in the world? Is it God's fault that we live in the highest rate of cancer? in Ontario as we continue to pollute the waters with our factories in our back yard? Is it God's fault when we're working too much and not honoring the Lord's day and our marriages are on the fringe or we're not spending enough time with our kids who are becoming more and more lonely? Is it God's fault that mental health is on the rise when we're just not happy with what we have? Is it God's fault these are just some storms. Is it God's fault? You know, my friend Sister Lucy in Africa teaches me so often. She says, you know, our people have so little in Tanzania, and yet they seem so much happier than when I visit Canada and the United States. Why is that? I said, Sister, I have no answer for you. It is perplexing how we continue to blame God for storms that in actual fact we are creating. 
And this isn't a guilt homily, this is a let's wake up and face the reality homily, right? Because the reality is God is the one who is calming the storm, not creating them. And yet, not only do we create the storm, but then we make these demands to God at times, friends, that he should act on this timeline and in this way. And God is saying, my will be done on earth as it is in heaven, not your will be done. My ways are so much greater than your ways, and my thoughts are so much greater than your thoughts. And he doesn't say this to to be condescending, but to remind ourselves who's in charge and that he's never asleep. Rather, he doesn't give us what we want. He always gives us what we need. And he humbles us so that way we actually come to understand who's in charge. And this God who is in charge is faithful to the thousandth generation. This God is a God who never abandons. This is a God who loves unconditionally, even though you and I and Job and so many others give him reasons to push him away. That's not who our God is. And so he wants to bring peace not only to the storms, friends, but he wants to give us peace that only he can give. And so we need to worry less We need to complain less, we need to demand less, and we need to trust more. Our job is to be a prayer warrior, to bring the need to the ears of the Lord, who is already aware of the need, of course. Then it's his job to act how he wants, when he wants, if he wants. Because sometimes God is giving us storms to remind ourselves of our dependency on him. Because when our lives are too easy, like in many first world countries, we no longer need God. It's all because of me, 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 me. But God reminds us, no, it's about me. I'm the one who created the universe. I'm the one who gives you the breath you take. I'm the one who dictates what the world says and does. So we need to be reminded. So currently, if you're facing a storm right now, it can be so overwhelming. We think, God, why aren't you doing something? Help me. And asking for help is something that is always okay. Jesus gives us permission. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened on my terms. Not yours. But keep asking. Keep asking. Never feel guilty to come to God for your needs, whether they be great or small. Never feel guilty. But we don't tell God what to do. We tell God our problem. This is the storm. Lord, help me to determine how to solve it. Or I just got to stay in the boat as it gets rocked, waiting for you to act. And he does act. He always cares for his children. Now, if you're on one of the beaches in Hawaii right now, where I've never been to Hawaii, but I hear it's fantastic, right? The water is calm. The sand feels nice between your toes. The sun is shining on you. Fantastic. In the horizon, friends, the storm is coming. While things are great, are you ready to face the storm? Because if you wait too long, when the storm comes, your boat is going to totally be overwhelmed. But if we're rooted in the Lord, whether it's the beach or the storm, we're going to be okay because God brings us the peace. It is God who is going to sustain, and God helps those who help themselves. He says, come to me, all you who are weary, and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. I will refresh you. Not you will refresh yourself or seek the help of others. Come to me, the Lord says, right? So we come to him. And then those of us who've overcome a storm, the storms in the rearview mirror, how grateful are we? How grateful are we? Because without his help, we would have never been able to overcome it. So let's not have short-term memory loss and placing God when we can, especially in these, w- these summer months where the weather gets better. 52 weeks of the year, it's the Lord's Day. As my podcast speaks about today, the importance of the Lord's Day. Do not fall into the trap, my brothers and sisters, of taking time away from God. Not one day in our life should pass where we don't make him the center of our universe. He is the center of the universe, figuratively and literally. 
So, where do we see ourselves right now? In a storm? Preparing for the next one? Or thankful that we just overcame one? Each of us have the ability, like Job, to be humbled, to be reminded that we need to worry less, make less demands, and trust more. Then, as the Lord brings peace as He wishes to give us, then we can always thank Him, for He's never asleep on the cushion, but just waiting for His time to fulfill His will. Let's be reminded of this, and let's remind others who are going through storms to do the same, so that we are united in prayer, confident in our God, and let God do His thing. Amen. Friends, once a year I have the great privilege of challenging and thanking at the same time our parishioners for their generosity in regards to time, talent, and treasure. Uh, we just admitted new people into the church, and one of them said to me, Father Rico, I've been a Catholic for a whole year. You never talk about money. I, the church I was at before, that, they talked about it all the time. I said, oh, it's coming, so-and-so. Wait for it to come. And then you'll see that I will bring it up once, and they will complain and say, that's all Father Rico talks about is money all year. So here's the money talk. So here we go. As you leave the, the church, friends, I want you to pick up a blue piece of paper, which is our financial statement on both sides. Okay, if you're uh, receiving the e-bulletin, I'm not attaching it because then it's released online and that could open us up to security issues, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, okay? So take one as you leave, whether you still are using paper bulletins, which I encourage you all to transition to the e-bulletin again, but uh, if you need it on paper, it's there for you. What I want to first do is to thank you for your generosity because I am the steward of all of your gifts that it is my responsibility as pastor to discern where the Holy Spirit wants us to spend and do with our time, talent, and treasure. So there are three T's. Today I'm going to focus mostly on treasure, and we're going to come back to time and talent a little bit later, okay? So when we look at the financial statement, I know you're going to look to the bottom line and go, Father Rico, we're doing great. And I say, okay, that's a perspective. We're doing great. As a revenue, we took in half a million dollars this year right? Fantastic, great, wonderful. 3,100 families in our parish. 3,100 families in our parish. Half a million dollars was taken in. All you mathematicians, you start doing the math. 20% of our parishioners continue to fund our parish. What about us 80%? This conversation is to open our minds in the way that God is asking us to give, not the scraps that we give to God. Are you aware, my brothers and sisters, of our Christian brothers and sisters when they belong to a parish? How their pastors ask them to receive a T4. Show me your T4. Oh, you make 100,000. Guess what the check is to St. Joseph's Church if you make 100,000? $10,000, please. Okay? And that's the expectation. Is that different in the Catholic Church? The difference is Father Rico doesn't ask to see your T4. The expectation is you've seen your T4 and that you're giving to God freely what is his because as of the book of Maccabees and throughout the scriptures, Jesus is very clear. He asks for the tithe, 10%. Not when we have enough money saved, not when I'm retired, not when I finished raising my kids, not when I get that new job. Now that each of us are to give 10% of our time, talent, and treasure to Almighty God. It's not a Father Rico rule. I don't matter. It's a God rule. And so few of us are actually tithing. So I want us to start actually getting into the routine of saying, hey, if this is God's expectation, I need to live up to His expectation. So let me ask you the question. What is the current minimum wage in the province of Ontario? Are you aware? 1655, correct. And on October the 1st, it's being raised to what? 1720 an hour, okay? So, so many of you are giving just a marginal amount of money. Some of you, sadly, are giving $5. $5. Can you walk into the grocery store and buy a quart of milk for $5 today? You can't. 
You can't. And as prices are on the rise, I want us to ask ourselves, have we been increasing our giving? Or have I been giving the same amount of money for a long time? If you were to go to a wedding and you prepare the busta, which is Italian for the envelope, right? If you were to give $5 in an envelope at my wedding, what would that $5 cover? Would it even cover the first drink that you drank when you walked into the hall to wish me and my beautiful bride congratulations, right? So why are we giving $5, $10 to God? If the minimum wage in our province is $17.20, that means that there is not one person in the province of Ontario who is working legally who would be paid less than that. So let's pick on one of my godchildren who just happens to be 16 and working at one of the local fast food restaurants in Niagara. If he or she is working for one hour, what would their wage be if the minimum wage is, let's pick on 17.20 an hour? What should they be giving to Almighty God as a starting point? What would you suggest? 17.20 an hour. Okay, and if I was a corporate lawyer billing at $350 an hour, what might be the starting point for me when I'm giving my offering to God? As a starting point, what would you suggest? Let's hear at 1030 Mass. It's easy math. I already gave you the number. $350 an hour because we are here an hour before God. That's not even the tithe. That's just if I bill or receive at this amount, I should begin my giving at minimum at that amount. Because I'm not asking you all to give the same because you all make different amounts of money. As pastor, the more money we get, the fallacy is because our Christian pastors, they get more money depending on how much money is raised. And in many cases, they get a high salary no matter what is brought in. Do you know what Father Rico's salary is? It's the same salary we've had for over a decade. Your pastor, which as the income has doubled since I began here, my salary is $2,000 a month. That's it. My godchildren make more money working at the fast food restaurant than your pastor who makes $1.72 an hour for my 80 hours that I give. Usually that's a low number during the week. So this fallacy that Father Rico wants more money for him, I can assure you, friends, I'm not in it for the money. I left corporate finance for a reason, okay? So you'll see under salaries and benefits, those salaries, that number, includes me, who, by the way, normally we have two priests in the parish. You have one who continues to work for you with joy, with joy. But all the office staff, you know how many people say, well, the staff are here as volunteers. The staff are not here on volunteers. They're all paid. They have mortgages and bills just like you. Why would they work for free? Now, they're not making what they could make in corporate America, okay? But they are. So, same thing with our musicians. There is only one musician who gives up his time. All the rest are paid. The church cleaner, paid. The podcast manager, paid. Youth minister, paid. Virtual mass, paid. Where does this come from? Pope Francis does not deliver me a bank load of money to say, serve the people of Grimsby. It's not how it works. Bishop Burgi doesn't send me checks either. I am responsible for the stewardship of what you give to me. So this is what we do with what I have. Can you imagine if all of us started giving the tithe? Can you imagine how we could rock Grimsby the way it should? Because here we are in a church, beautifully air-conditioned. All the parents who brought their grade eight kids, oh, they expect Father Rico's gonna give a homily. They expect that the church is gonna be cool. When's the last time they contributed to the church? $125,000, those HVAC machines that we still haven't paid off. Well, Father Rico, just use the ah, na, 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 na. It's up to the people, right? It's up to the people. Are we aware of many parishes in our diocese that continue to not have air conditioning? We only have air conditioning because we're paying for it. Do you know what the hydro bill was this month? $2,700. Wow. So what am I going to do with $5? We are reaping the benefits of people who have been very generous, who are tithing. And those of you who are, I thank you. But we need to get 100% of us on board. So what I'm encouraging us to do is start at the, what do you make an hour? And those of you who are retired, that includes you too. Okay? We need to consciously be giving to God. He gets first. We're to work with the 90% that's left. Not, we give God the scraps and we take because then we're not trusting. 
We're not trusting. So when we think about the many things that our parish offers, I encourage you this summer as you go on vacation, go to another church and see what services they offer because it's also easy to take for granted what the staff and I do here, happily. But the reality is, as Catholics, how many times have you walked into a church and given a free resource, an Advent, and in Lent? When's the last time you heard of a parish in our diocese, zero, that have a full-time youth minister? So we want to encourage our youth. We want to have a youth minister. So I've hired a youth minister. And then many of our families are not even sending our kids into youth ministry. So we are utilizing resources, and we're under, underusing our resources as well. So another resource I want us to focus, especially those of you who are watching the virtual mass, our cameras cost $33,000. $33,000. And you'll see, as Jim puts on the slide every single day, about if you are watching virtually, please send your e-transfer. This is not a free service. It costs money. It costs money. We need your support. It's time to step our game up, friends. If you were to sell your house right now in Grimsby, the average house price. But Father, we've got $1.2 million in savings. Friends, if we want a serious conversation about an expansion of a hall and a condo building in our property, on our property, where am I going to get, what am I going to build? A garage for 1.2? right? We need to be serious about our giving. So that way, we can actually really build the kingdom of God here. And Father Rico doesn't get a pay raise. Everything you give me goes back into the community. Think about our dreams, our hopes, where we could be. It's time to be serious about what we give to God. And even if you think I'm an inefficient manager, and maybe I am, right? Is it really up to you? God says, give to me and let go. The more we give to God, the more he blesses us back. But we should be giving to him not because we expect, because he already does so much. So some things I want to focus on. My daily podcast. Those of you that watch my podcast and listen every day, right? At the very end, do you hear John Paul say, every single day, if you like what you've heard, consider contributing. Do you even know that line? Why aren't we giving? It's $2,000 a month to run the podcast. I'm in 83 countries. How much money does Father Rico get from running the podcast? Zero. It's all expense to the employees, expense to the, the network to be able to stream it on every platform, right? So friends, this is a serious conversation. And so our parish website, which is updated daily, Andrew, John Paul, and I work so hard at keeping us current on our website, the church uses Formed, which is the Catholic Church's version of Netflix. You have to pay for Netflix at home. We don't pay for Formed. Father Rico pays the $2,400 in our operational budget. So that way we are learning about God at home. We've got great programs for our young people and animated films. We've got great content for our teenagers. We've got great content for you adults. Is it being used? I want you all to log in and use it. We're paying for it. Utilize it. My YouTube channel with the videos of praying the rosary as a family. You put Father Rico on your smart TV and the words come up so that we're praying as a family. Are you using those links? Use them. If you have a Facebook page and an Instagram account, are you following the parish? Every day we have beautiful posts, saint quotes, quotes from scripture, things to be aware of, activities within the parish. This is a parish that is alive but we're just starting. I want us to be here, because that's where the Holy Spirit is guiding us. I want all 3,100 families at Mass every week giving praise to God, not because of me, but because he deserves it. And so we need to work towards it. And it needs to start with our giving, that we need to be serious with our giving. And so I'm inviting each of you to enter into this prayerful time of serious consideration Let's stop riding the coattails of others and start realizing God deserves his share. And we need to do just that. When you see our expense side, friends, so again, salaries and benefits includes a heck of a lot of people, okay? The one, uh, so all of our expenses are down because I believe we are very efficient. However, you'll notice one number, the diocesan assessment is up. 
The diocesan assessment is a tax onto each parish. So the bishop who is running his chancery is like head office, okay? So we benefit from Bishop Burgi's ministry as well as things like the marriage tribunal to help us with annulments, our youth ministry office. We have so many great offices in, in head office. So we are billed 10% of our overall income. So that number always goes up as our income goes up, okay? And uh, by the way, the bishop also makes the same amount of money as Father Rico makes. So again, it's, it's just a very, 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 very minor pastor salary. You'll notice under twinning, you see $10,000. We continue to twin with St. John Bosco Parish in Port Coburn, who, by the way, has a church without air conditioning. So you are very comfortable right now, but Father Walton is celebrating Mass in Port Coburn, and they are roasting right now because they do not have air conditioning. So again, luxuries. So it's important for the big fish to help the little fish. So we continue to partner with the great work that Father Walton and his team are doing at St. John Bosco in Port Coburn. So what are some things that we're working on this year as we strive to get that number up so we can actually dream big and expand our parish as it should? So one thing you may or may not be aware, the government of Ontario does do great things every once in a while, and one of them is called the anti-hate um, benefit that they have been giving. So Father Rico heard of this a year ago, and I was the first to apply. And so we have received it four times, and the government has given us $10,000 grants times four. So I have used $40,000 to put cameras on the outside of our building, security system on the inside of our building, and we're going to do some work on the offices to make sure Tracy and our staff are always kept safe. Number two, uh, those of you who own a home, our home here that Father Joe's currently lives in and obviously myself, our rectory was built in 1995. Anyone own a home since 1995? You done any updates to it? Anybody done any updates to their home since 1995? Not our rectory. So our rectory with old carpets and all kinds of things that need some upgrading. It's time to upgrade the rectory to get it to a living condition again. So we're going to do not something major, but minor upgrades in our rectory, as well as, as I mentioned, we have great ideas coming through evangelization. You'll notice on the backside, friends, especially where it's designer purse bingo, I can't wait for you to see that number because the bingo has become such a blessing to our parish because when we make $26,000 in one night... I take that $26,000, and there's our evangelization budget, right? Now think, if that 26 could be 126, can you imagine what I could do with that for us? So again, together we can all work on this, and we're all at different levels. Finally, I want to draw your attention to something that is significantly down, and that is our special collections. These are the ones that we remember we are a global church, that God is asking us to not only care about the people of Grimsby, but the people of the world. So these collections are down, and I think there's a reason for that. So many of us have moved to e-giving, and so you give your offering to the parish, but we're forgetting all those extra envelopes. So I want to make sure that when you're reading our e-bulletin, and you see at the bottom of the page that says all those special collections, and by the way, they're listed on the back here too, that we are reminding ourselves it is our responsibility to care for our brothers and sisters to the north. It's our responsibility to care for our brothers and sisters in Africa and in the Holy Land, etc. So make sure that in your giving, that if you are e-giving, which I'm happy about, no problem, make sure that we are not also forgetting our diocesan assessments that talk about sharing our resources with the rest of the world, okay? So, can we do better? Yes. Are we doing okay? Yes, we're doing okay. Can we do better? Yes. Okay? So I want you to, all of you to pray. I encourage you, take this home, start to look at it, start to think, what could I be doing as far as my treasure? And then time and talent. Same thing. When you leave church, do you ever hear me say, have a good week? Do I ever say that to you? Yes. Only when I'm away, right? Because I won't see you for a week. What do I say to you? Have a good day. Because what's the expectation? I'm going to see you between now and next Sunday, which means you're going to be involved in the parish. All you retired people, oh, when I retire, I'm going to be more involved in the church. Where are you? Where are you? All you people who are working and use work as an excuse. Baloney, you got lots of time on your hands doing everything. We're not serving the Lord from the very young 
to the very old. Each of us are responsible of giving God our time, talent, and treasure. That 10%, which looks different for each of us, but we need to be giving. So if you're thinking, you're right, Father Rico, it's the same Eucharistic ministers, it's the same altar server, it's the same volunteer, it's the same person who does everything here. It's time for us all to step up our game. So I want you to pray about it. I want you to take this home. I want you to look at your T4. I want you to think of your household income. Young people who have jobs, you need to be contributing. Those of us who are not working anymore, you need to be contributing. Father Rico tithes, you need to tithe. Why? Because God says so. And do so not out of duty, out of joy. Lord, you are so good to me, and so I want to be good to you. If you have any comments about it, anything, you want me to break it down for you, don't send me an email. Email says, you have something to say and you really don't want to talk to me. If you want to talk about this, let's pick up the phone, let's have a conversation or face-to-face, not at the door of the church, by the way. We make appointments, okay? Let's make an appointment and talk and see how God is encouraging us to grow and that our expansion plans are going to be significant, okay? So once again, on behalf of the parish, I thank you but I encourage all of us to dig deeper and to give to God what is His. Let us stand together and offer our beliefs and prayers to God who can never be outdone in generosity using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With Humility and faithfulness replace our trust in our God who calms our storms and who blesses us every day. We bring to him our needs, trusting that God is never asleep on the cushion, but always attentive to what we need. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That all members of the church grow in their trust in God's mercy and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The leaders of the world care for their people diligently and justly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the indigenous peoples of this land, that they may find healing, justice, and respect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the disabled, that they may experience the healing and comfort that only Christ can give, especially Kathleen Beauvais, Neil Gusfa, Eileen Palmer, Kelly Kovacs, Lisa Carboni, baby Bianca Carboni, Tracy Stevenson. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our faithful departed, especially Hendrika Bodhi, Hugh Dean, Myron Dudich, may they reap the reward of their labors in God's eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for a special intention for the D'Souza and Digba families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we bring to God from the silence of our hearts. All-powerful God, you alone calm the storms of life, and you alone have the power to answer our prayers. Please answer them not what we want, but always how you want. We ask these in all things through Christ our Lord.
you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim. This Mass, we use Eucharistic prayer number three. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. my Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. By Jesus' mercy. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, our husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Catherine of Alexandria, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. With Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace.
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those at home receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Under thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls, amen. Good Saint Joseph, ever watchful guardian of the Holy Family, Protect the chosen people of Jesus Christ. Keep us free from the blight of error and corruption and be our ally in the conflict with the powers of darkness. As of old, you rescued the child Jesus from the plots of Herod. So now defend the universal church from all harm. Keep us one and all under your continual protection so that by your help and example, we may lead a holy life, die a happy death, and come to possess eternal life in heaven. Amen. Friends, we continue to celebrate our graduates as they have now graduated from college and university already. All of our grade eights graduated this week. I had my goddaughters on Tuesday and then our three Catholic schools Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Tomorrow we have a big graduation for our BT graduates, the grade 12s. We're so proud of you as you transition from Blessed Trinity to a bright future ahead. And then we're going to graduate from graduations, which will be fun too. We continue to support our brothers and sisters to the north with our North of 60 campaign. I thank those members of our Aster program who were so great in leading us in a wonderful day of truth and reconciliation yesterday with our indigenous brothers and sisters. And we continue to give praise to God for this last week of school that our young people and our staff and support staff will last until Thursday. I know they can. I know they can. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. One, two, three, two, four. Son, all praise to 
the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome the King who was and is and evermore will be. In Jesus' mighty name, I believe. All praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit.